This is uh, Unit 2, uh, Antibiotics. Agrochemicals are chemical products used in agriculture. Uh, this includes a wide uh, variety of different chemicals that we use, uh, from the crop dusters here, spraying the entire fields, to us putting chemicals on our lawn. Some of these pesticides include insecticides, killing insects, herbicides, uh, killing plants. Uh, this includes synthetic fertilizers, animal manure, uh, hormones, and other chemical growth agents. Uh, what is a pesticide? Uh, it comes from the Latin name uh, for killing pests. Uh, this means that it is used to deter, incapacitate, or kill pests. One billion pounds of pesticide are sprayed into fields every year. Uh, they are related to the type of pest that they are, as you can see here from the, uh, the list in the next two pages, from controlling uh, algae uh, to controlling uh, microorganisms and biocides, antimicrobials to kill microorganisms such as bacteria and viruses, uh, attractants to attract pests. Uh, fungicides to kill fungus, uh, uh, a whole long list of ways to kill different groups. Uh, miticide to kill mites, uh, oversides to kill the eggs of insects. When we bring home plants uh, from the grocery store or florist, sometimes you see little bugs flying around all the time. Uh, you can't just kill the bugs, you have to kill the eggs that are in the soil there too. Uh, we use pheromones to attract insects so that they can be easier uh, dealt with. What are the benefits from the antibiotics and the pesticides? Uh, most important one is to control the pests. Uh, if you have too many of them, they can wipe out your entire field. Uh, when we read books, we see about how grasshoppers uh, can destroy entire fields. In Africa, they still do this. Um, not only do the bugs can kill plants themselves, the bugs can carry other uh, fungi or bacteria upon them, which can also uh, kill the plants along the way. If we do this, if we control these pests, our amount of products increase. Uh, we also control the other plants that may grow. We also control the other uh, smaller insects, which may also be on them. This allows us to also control uh, human disease. If we have a large amount of human waste out there, and we can control that, we also save lives. When we have diseases uh, such as uh, diphtheria, when we have diseases such as malaria, if we can control the mosquito, uh, we can control malaria. If we can control the, the insects, uh, such as in the Black Plague, we can control the Black Plague. Um, we see nowadays that because of global warming, more and more mosquitoes are staying alive over the winter, and consequently we're seeing a higher instance of malaria, a dengue fever, yellow fever, because the insects aren't being controlled anymore. We also control organisms that harm other human activities. Uh, when you're driving down the street as you come to a crossroad, if plants are hiding your vision of the road, accidents can happen there. If you have a wooden structure in the south and you don't control the termites, the termites will go in and destroy the entire wooden structure. So you can see that there are a wide variety of ways that we use to control our insect population. We have to remember though that for every dollar that is spent on pesticides, we get back four dollars in the crops that are saved. What can we do instead of using uh, pesticides? What can we do instead of using chemicals? We can try no-till farming. Uh, no-till farming 
involves only planting seeds. In the past, we would uh, run a rotavator through the cornfield. We then run another device in there to break up the clods that were in there. We then run another device to plant holes for the corn, and then we'd finally plant the corn. What this did was allow more methane to escape, more beneficial chemicals to be gone, more beneficial organic matter. So now we've decided that we don't need to do all that cultivation. We can try it just with one time planting the corn. This also increases the amount of organic matter in the soil. All the stuff you didn't till under will gradually break down into the soil. This also increased the amount of microbes and bacteria that are in the soil. We can use biological pest controls such as pheromones and microbial pesticides. The boll weevil until recently has decimated the cotton crops. We have now learned that although it's hard for us to kill the boll weevil, we can use a pheromone to attract it to a small portion of the cotton crop and then use uh, strong methods to kill off the boll weevil. We can try interfering with the insect's reproduction, such as sterilizing the males. We try this with um, a malaria in mosquitoes, and we've decreased the amount of malaria in there. We can use composted yard waste, so all of our grass clippings that we put back down there will decay and get back into the soil. Other alternatives are genetic engineering. Uh, these are some plums. Uh, they used to be decimated by the plum pox, a disease that was carried by aphids. We've changed that genetically, and now they're resistance to this aphids. We almost didn't have uh, tomatoes. Uh, it became too expensive to hand-pick tomatoes. And the, as the price rose and rose, genetic engineering came in to develop a coating on them where the skin was a little more resistant to touch. So now we can use a machine to pick our tomatoes, and we all have tomatoes at a cheaper price. Instead of using uh, chemicals, we can use soil steaming. Uh, we have tried this in the U.S. and This is control their insects. About the same price as the pesticide. However, it is more labor intensive. Another way that they do in India, uh, something called panchakava. It's what they do is they mix five products of cow. They use dung, manure, urine, milk, curd, and ghee. They mix all these things together. They let it uh, ferment, and they use this as a fertilizer and a pesticide. Another one is integrated pest management. This is where we try to use the least amount of insecticide, the least amount of pesticides to control the various insects uh, that, that are in a field. Uh, we do this several different ways. One where we try to bring the insects to a certain area, uh, such as right here, we're using a Japanese beetle trap. There's a pheromone in there. The Japanese beetles come in there and then fall into a water trap or a bag and uh, die. Um, we also use different scents, uh, such as geranium scents to push away a different mosquitoes from an area. Although the data is not strong, uh, we have some indication that our alternatives to pesticides can be equally effective as the use of chemicals. In Sweden, they cut their use to pesticides in half, and they don't see much of a difference in the amount of uh, crop production. In Indonesia, they cut the pesticide use by 65%, yet still have a 50% crop increase. If you can control only the insect that attacks the plant, you will have much more success than you have with a broad use antibiotic. In Florida, if they use composted yard waste, 
This is also highly effective at reducing the plant parasitic nematodes and increasing crop yield. We still have a huge problem with pests. In 1940, we only lost 7% of our crops to pests. New insect and weed species have developed since then. So despite the fact that our use of antibiotics, our use of pesticides has gotten better, we have increased our loss to 13%. Why is it bad to use pesticides? Unfortunately, it has a huge potential health damage. It has not been studied enough to know exact health damage, but we know there's a potential in there. We know that 3 million people get poisoned by pesticides from which 20,000 will die every year. If we look at the cost just in the United States alone, we see that $9.6 billion can be attributed to the maluse of pesticides. Eighty percent of the antibiotics used in the U.S. are used on farm animals. That's 10.2 million pounds which are given to animals every year, much more than that are given to people. So the potential for abuse is high among uh, farmers. Antibiotics are sprayed into fruit trees. Since it's sprayed indiscriminately throughout the air, it is borne to other places. If it's not washed off the fruit, it may enter our system and um, cause us to develop resistance to this. This is con considered to be a huge uh, public health concern in the 21st century. Uh, we are doing more and more studies to evaluate the use, but it certainly seems that uh, this will be a concern uh, well into our lives. We find pesticides, antibiotics in the air, the soil, around farms, in the surface and groundwater, in the wild animals. We even find it on meat and poultry. The EPA has stepped in. Uh, we can see from other units where the EPA has uh, developed guidelines to help protect uh, humans. We have uh, several different acts, one of which is the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, the Food Quality Protection Act, which is part of the EPA, reviewed every 15 years. This allowed us to put labels on different pesticides that are out there, labels on the antibiotics to see how toxic they are. Uh, these are our five uh, classes, uh, for which nowadays you need to have a license in order to use these. So we even have got to the point now where the individual landowner can apply uh, chemicals to his lawn, and this includes fertilizers. But the landscaper cannot apply this unless he has a license and he has been trained to see which level of fatality is used for each class. Can they be non-toxic or they can be fatal? Uh, they need to be trained in the use of them before they can apply them.